Today, Maine's Department of Health and Human Services announced several moves. Ones the commissioner says will help the agency target and better handle cases of abuse and neglect. In a news release, DHHS Commissioner Jean Lambrew announced that she has appointed Bobby Johnson as the new director for the Office of Child and Family Services. Johnson, a 28-year veteran in the department, has been serving as acting director since embattled head Todd Landry resigned back in November. OCFS has been under increasing pressure since the deaths of four children, all in the DHHS system. They died within a 30-day period in the summer of 2021. In each case, it was a parent who was convicted of causing their death. As one of her first duties, Johnson will oversee a complete audit of the Child Welfare Division, conducted by an outside organization. The goal is to have a list of short-term and long-term changes by the end of March. And finally, Commissioner Lambrew says that the Children's Behavioral Services, which is currently part of OCFS, will move to the Office of Behavioral Health so that OCFS can better focus on child welfare and child care. And just this afternoon, Bobby Johnson sat down with New Center Maine's Chris Costa for her first in-depth television interview as the new head of Child and Family Services. Chris joins us now. So, Chris, I'm sure many of the questions you had for her are ones she has heard a lot from frustrated lawmakers. Brian, you're absolutely right. I spoke with Johnson for about 30 minutes today about her career as a social worker, about rising through the ranks to become the head of Child and Family Services, an agency that has taken a lot of criticism for how it has handled cases especially in the light of those deaths of the four children in 2021. About halfway through the conversation, I asked her this. There's been a lot of scrutiny on the Office of Child and Family Services lately. Do you feel that that scrutiny is warranted? I recognize that there are problems and that we have a lot of work to do to improve the system. I know that staff are frustrated and I share that frustration. And I also have optimism and hope for where we're going to move to in the future. You've, you've probably read them. Previous reports that, that, that said those workloads for some of those caseworkers just really were unmanageable. How do you plan to manage those workloads? Part of that is gonna be by, you know, spending time in the districts with our staff, learning from them about how they think the work can be structured effectively and efficiently, hearing from other stakeholders as well, so resource parents, because that's they're going out to see kids in resource homes, and so, wanting to understand you know, from resource parents, what, you know, what does that look like? What are the ways that we can effectively connect with them in order to support them and also the children that they're caring for? Is there a sense of urgency for you right now? Absolutely. Why? Children can't afford to wait. And I think that we need to quickly move forward the priorities and our knowledge and understanding of how to make those improvements in order to ensure their health and safety. Every day that we wait is a day that a child waits. And so um, we're committed to, to doing the work that we need to do, to addressing the problems that exist, and to doing so with that sense of urgency. The deadline for that audit is the end of March. Now, I also asked Johnson about the calls to split the Office of Child and Family Services out from under the DHHS umbrella. She said the department's willing to consider it. She said to justify that, they would need to demonstrate that the investment and having a separate office would better serve children and families. Brian? Chris, with that first interview, Chris, thank you.